Hey guys, good afternoon. It is Chris with Nichols Retirement Empire. Today, I'm all sweaty and hot and nasty from working. And I thought, you know what? This would be a great opportunity to do my second video on best advice for new teachers or best advice for teachers. And uh, this one is gonna be about working. Okay, you need to be prepared if you're a new teacher or if you're going into teaching or maybe you haven't been teaching very long, you need to be prepared to work hard. Okay, you need to work hard. It's going to be a hard job. Um, and a lot of people today are not used to working very hard. They're just, they're just not. Uh, a lot of things that we do are easy. We have all this you know, we have all these uh, conveniences that people used to not have uh, even, you know, 30, 40 years ago. And uh, it's, we're just not used to getting hot and sweating and all that, you know, and working. So, but teaching obviously is not a job where you're necessarily gonna be getting hot and sweating and all that kind of stuff. But you know, you need to be ready to work hard. Um, my advice, this is one of my best pieces of advice when it comes to hard work is this, you need to get to work early, okay? Go to work early because you know, there's a good reason for this and, and I didn't do this when I first started teaching I didn't understand why this was a good idea uh, but as I got older this became my, my norm um, I would get to work a good hour before other people um, and now and a lot of people they get they have this mentality that teaching is a 40 hour a week job and you get there when it's time for you to be there and you leave when it, you can't do that you're not going to get you're, you're not going to get finished what you need to get finished some days you might be able to do that and then some days you need to stay longer and some days you know it just depends it depends on how much experience you have and stuff like that but it's a salaried job you're not punching a time clock you're not getting paid by the hour you get a salary okay for the, for the year so that's one thing you need to realize but I would get there an hour before everybody else. And the reason I did that was because nobody would bother me. I could get more done in that hour than I could ever imagine getting done during school or after school. Because after school, I'd have all these people coming into my office. You'd have parents wanting to come in and see you and stuff like that. But if you get there an hour before time, and, and they're just 30 minutes, to, but get there early because you're gonna get more work done during that period of time than you are at the end of the day. You're gonna get, you're gonna be so much more productive. So if you really wanna get things done and you wanna be, really wanna be ready for the day, you know, and put your best foot forward, kind of an idea, get there early. That's my advice and then leave on time. Uh, another thing is this, whatever it is you plan on doing, I don't care what it is, it needs to be planned out where it is the fastest and easiest way to do it. Don't ever overcomplicate things. Don't make anything harder than it needs to be. Make it the easiest and the fastest you can possibly make it. When I started teaching, uh, you know, back in the 80s, well, I, I coached three sports. I was a brand new teacher. I didn't know what I was doing. I'm coaching three sports. I had to leave immediately after school every day. I mean, I was so busy. And I had to learn real quick that if it was something that took a long time, I wasn't going to be able to do it. Okay, when it came to lesson plans and stuff that I had to grade and things like that, don't overcomplicate it. If there's an easy way to do it, do it the easy way. This is going to make your life so much better. Uh, I mean, if the, the fastest way to grade a test, I knew how to, whatever the fastest way was, that's what I did. Whatever the fastest way was to grade student work, that's what I did. If I didn't have time to grade it, I didn't, I didn't assign it. Uh, I didn't assign things that were hard for me to grade. Now, was I assessing their learning? Yeah, you can assess their learning without making things complicated for you. You just gotta be smart because you're gonna be working, I mean, you're gonna be working full time from you know from the time you get there to the time you leave, you're gonna be busy. So don't make it where you can't get stuff done. I mean, you don't ever wanna be in a situation where you turn stuff in late. You don't ever wanna be in a, in a situation where you're showing up late to the meetings or you're missing things or you're whatever because you're so busy you can't do the rest of your job don't don't do things that are not necessary 
even if they seem really cool, even if they seem really fun, even if they seem like all oh, the kids will look. I, look, you, you gotta have time to grade it, okay? I would have teachers when I was an administrator and you know, it would be, you know, the, the nine weeks grading period ends today at 12 o'clock, you know. And you'd have people scrambling around. I never did that. I always had my grades ready. Before I went home every day, all of my grades were up to date. I never left anything ungraded on my desk on any day. I never went home with things to grade in 30 years. Okay, so just I'm just telling you, that can be done. You just have to fix it to where that's how you operate. Okay, and what happened is I would have people that would not have their grades finished. And it's time. I mean, we're giving out report cards. And the report cards are getting published tomorrow. And I never understood that. And they would tell me things like, like, here I am, I'm an administrator. They'd be like, well, I just didn't have time to grade. Uh, you know, I gave, this, I gave this project. And, you know, every one of them took me an hour and a half to grade. And I got all these kids. And I'm like, well, why did you give it to them? If you didn't have time to grade it, why did you make that assignment? I mean, I want you to think about that <laughs> before you give any assignment, the first thing that ought to occur in your head is, is how long is it going to take me to grade this? And, you know, how much are the kids going to learn? I don't care how cute it is. I don't care how fun it is. I don't care what it, how much are the kids going to learn, you know, it, for the amount of time it takes to grade. Now, if it takes you a long time to grade, but it better be something they learned a whole lot. I mean, it better be something they just knocked out of the park because you don't have time to spend 45 minutes on every assessment you give for each kid. You can't do that. And I would never feel any sympathy for those people when they would say stuff, well, I just, I, I've been grading this stuff, it's taken me four days to grade it. And I'm thinking, if you gave something that took four days to grade, that's your fault. Now, if you're a literature teacher and you know you have to give things and they have to be written and you have to go over it in detail, then you need to organize your you know, the way that you give assignments and the way that you grade in a way that takes that into account. Okay, you better take that into account because it, that will get you in the long run and you're doing a bunch of hard work. I can't tell you how many times I saw people just working themselves to death, but it was so inefficient and it was such a waste of time that they couldn't do the things they needed to do. You know, the things that were the most important they couldn't do because they're working themselves to a frenzy over something that's not important. So every assignment you give, everything you do, every lesson you plan, every way that you do something, if there is an easier way to do it, do it the easier way. Now, I'm not talking about being lazy, you know, and just throwing grades out there. I'm talking about getting, you know, doing legitimate grading but you have got to figure out what works for you. I knew what worked for me and how I could grade stuff. And my grades were accurate reflection of whether or not the kids learned. And you know, I felt they were. And my, all my supervisors felt they were. Uh, so, you know, you have to be efficient, okay? Um, same way in your classroom, the way you manage your classroom and all that kind of stuff, you wanna be, you wanna be efficient. Because I'm telling you, you can drive yourself crazy and you can create a lot of work for yourself that is not necessary. And I never, you know, as, as, as an administrator, when I observe people, I never felt sorry for the people that did that. And they would always inevitably want to tell me how hard it was they were working. And I would look at it and I'm like, yeah, but you're doing stuff that doesn't, you know, it's no more effective than what this guy over here is doing. It took him, you know, 45 minutes to do a lesson plan, it took you six days. You know, and yours has all these bells and whistles, you have all this stuff, but his kids made the same grade that your kids did on the on the assessment. So don't, you know, don't over, don't do the overkill kind of thing. So, uh, be prepared to work hard and be prepared to work smart. I'm telling you, that's the best thing. I, I, I don't know how many teachers I've dealt with that just never got that. And they would make themselves miserable because they made the job 10 times harder than it needed to be. It's already hard. You know, it's already tough. It's already, you know, people already drop out of teaching left and right. Don't make it harder 
by not being efficient and not being smart okay so that's my second video on um, my second video on best advice for new teachers all right see you guys later thanks for watching i'll, I'll make some more of these videos bye